Alginate Basics. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover the basic use of AccuCast Alginate. Now, some of the rules for these alginates apply to other types and brands of alginates, but overall, a lot of these are very specific to this type of alginate. And when you get an order from us, you've probably seen these line cards. These are uber important. We put these in there with lots of tips, and much of what we're going to cover in this uh, tutorial is summarized on our uh, line card about the AccuCast alginates. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you need to understand about the AccuCast series of alginates is the way that the formula names are coded. The first digit in the formula name tells you the set time. The second two digits tell you the recommended water temperature. So, for instance, 270D, that's a dental formula. That is very fast. That's intended for uh, dental impressions and also can be used for children and infant hands. 380 is also really fast, three minutes at 80 degree water temperature. 590 is, of course, five minutes with 90 degree water temperature. And then, of course, you have Genesis 5, which is also a medium set, which is about a five minute working time. And the 880, which is eight minutes with 80 degree water temperature temperatures, which is a fairly slow formula. And last but not least is uh, Genesis X, which is a 10 minute working time at 70 degrees water temperature. Now it's important to remember that different alginates are formulated for different purposes. Typically hands, especially children's hands or infant hands, you would want to mold with very fast setting alginate like the 270 or the 380. Whereas 590 is better suited for faces and uh, Genesis and 880 are for bodies, torsos, things like that. Now, the first thing I recommend doing is marking your buckets and measuring out the water you're going to use. Now, we're just going to do a, a few little test batches here, but I recommend measure out all of the water you're going to need, uh, be it a gallon bucket or a five gallon bucket, and use room temperature water or cold water. Do not use hot water from the tap, especially when you're starting out. Hot water acts as an accelerant for alginate. So if you're not careful and use really hot tap water, it's going to set up lightning fast and you'll have almost no working time. And remember that when these alginate formulas like the 590 call for 90 degree water, 90 degree water will not feel hot to the touch. So if the water you're using feels hot to the touch, it's way too hot. So be very careful about that. If you don't have uh, the ability to check your water temperature and make sure it is the right temperature, you're always better off erring on the side of too cold because all that's going to do is slow down the formula and give you additional working time. Now, once you measure out the alginate that you're going to use and the water that you're going to use, make sure to seal up the bag and set that aside. Alginate is very sensitive to ambient humidity, so you always want to seal up what's not in use to preserve it and give it the longest shelf life possible. Now, alginate is one of the few materials that I measure out uh, by eye, and uh, it has a lot of room for error. So uh, the formula is very flexible, as you'll see here. I typically recommend a ratio for most of our formulas of about one to one, as you'll see here. I like to fluff it up a little bit first and then scoop it out. You never want to hard pack that into the scoop. If you do, you're going to wind up with a very thick, almost unworkable alginate. So make sure when you're doing this one-to-one uh, -one ratio that you fluff it up a little bit first and then scoop it out. Now you'll notice that I put the alginate into the mixing container first before the water. And that's really important. Alginate is very low density and wants to float. So if you put your water in first and then add the alginate, it'll try to float on top and it's very difficult to get it to mix down to the bottom of the water. So always dispense your uh, alginate first and then pour the water on top of it. Now for this batch, I've measured out a cup of dry alginate, and then in my measuring cup of water, I have a cup and a quarter of water, a little bit extra water. And you're gonna see why here in just a minute. What I've done here is just dispensed right at about a cup of water to the cup of alginate. So this is a pretty clean one-to-one -one mix. And what this will do is result in a mix that's fairly thick and ideal for vertical surfaces like face casts and body casts and full head casts. And I typically don't spend more than about 30 seconds to a minute of mixing time. 
And you'll notice even when we thoroughly mix that sometimes we'll get little tiny lumps in the alginate and that's okay. A lot of times what that is is impurities in the water that cause a reaction that makes those little lumps. But that's okay. It won't affect the quality of your cast. As you'll see later on here, uh, those little lumps don't affect anything. So you don't want to waste valuable time trying to get rid of those lumps. So remember that about 30 seconds to a minute of good thorough mixing either by hand or with a drill or a stir stick is adequate to get a very good mix on your alginate. And that one to one ratio is very nice for vertical surfaces like a face cast or a full head cast. You want a little bit of slump. You don't want it so thick that it's unworkable, but uh, you also don't want it runny to where it's just running off your subject and you have lots of wasted material. Now water quality is very important. As you saw there with those little lumps, some water impurities are okay, but very mineral rich water like well water can be a problem sometimes. When in doubt, it's always a good idea to carry some bottled water with you to a casting uh, or make sure you have some uh, purified or distilled water. Now we're going to go back to that original batch that we mixed up one to one and we're going to add the rest of that water to it. So now we have about one and a quarter cup of water to one cup of alginate. And what that's going to do is rather than give us that, uh, that thick uh, paste-like consistency, this is going to be more like a thick liquid. And even though it's a thick liquid, it's still a flowing liquid that's ideal for hand casts. So uh, any, anytime you have a hand cast where someone's going to be putting their hand into a container to make the mold, this is where we use this type of mix ratio, where we use slightly more water than dry alginate by volume. So remember that you can vary that formula according to your needs. If uh, you prefer a runnier alginate, you can mix slightly more water. If you prefer a thicker alginate, you can add more of the dry alginate. And you can vary that formula a lot according to your needs uh, for individual casts. You just want to make sure that uh, when you're making a pourable consistency that you don't get it soupy. You don't want it to be really runny and soupy. Otherwise, it's going to take a long time to set up and it's going to be very weak and very fragile once it does set up. Or it may not set up at all if you put way too much water in it. And the inverse is true. If you uh, make it too thick with way too much alginate, it's going to set up too fast and it's going to be so thick and clumpy it's going to be very difficult to spread. And one of the reasons I like it to be a little on the thick side is for the step that I do here with hand casts. Is whenever I mold hands I always like to plunge my subject's hand down into the alginate and then pull it out and spread the alginate around and push it into all of the detail and then have them reinsert their hand into the liquid alginate. And that's a crucial step to making sure you get a very nice uh, bubble-free cast or as close to bubble-free as your subject might allow. Now when you're starting out working with alginate and doing basic hand or face casts, it's always a good idea to do what we're doing here. Run small batches and get used to the way alginate feels through its entire working time and setting time. And uh, that will give you a good familiarity with uh, just the way it feels and being able to expect that set time as it comes on. All those things are real important, especially when you're doing face casts. One of the things you'll notice with uh, the 590 and the 880 is they both go through a stage where they get kind of gummy like this right before they set up. And that's, that's nice. Most alginates don't allow for that. And having that little uh, gummy stage where that intermediate stage allows you to put cotton fiber on or do any last minute cleanup you need to do before it sets completely. But I can't stress enough, working in small batches when you're starting out and always doing a test batch with whatever your local water source is will help you a lot in building your confidence and just understanding the basic working of the alginate and knowing what to expect. And that also helps you uh, prepare your subject for the life cast so they know what to expect. Because this is a weird material and once it cures, has a very odd feel to it. And remember that alginate is temporary. 
Alginate is essentially a form of gelatin. So if you leave it out and it sits and dries for several days, it will shrink and distort and turn to a hard chalk-like material. So you want to be prepared to cast into it as soon as possible. I always like to pour up my positives, be it uh, hydrostone like we did here, or clay, or whatever we're going to use. I like to pour those up within 30 minutes to an hour tops of making the cast. If you wait too long, it'll start to shrink and distort and ruin your life cast. And there you have the basic rules for making a life cast using AccuCast alginates. Be sure to check out our other videos. We have much more complete tutorials on face casting and hand casting. And if you visit the resource page on our website, you'll see we have a whole video library full of life casting videos. And I'll put a link to that in the video description as well as links to all the products we used. And you can find all of our stuff at uh, brickintheyard.com. And be sure to check us out on Instagram. Uh, we have a lot of material that we photograph around our shop, a lot of projects and uh, some of the videos that don't necessarily make it to videos and some of the uh, tutorials we're working on. You can find all of the progress pictures for those on our Instagram page at instagram.com slash Supply.